Yeah, let's move on to the next reaction. I'd like to get your take here on this next clip here, Elder. Read the Sports Illustrated article. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is built around KGB's relationship with his wife, mm -hmm. and they blame the religious mm -hmm. cult. They blame Straightway mm -hmm. and Pastor Dow, basically, mm -hmm. for the fallout of your marriage, but you're saying it happened even before that. Oh, it was before that. I mean, it really started with the whole image of God. I, I was one time reading, it was in 1 Corinthians 11, it says uh, the image of God was created, uh, the, 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 that man was creating the image of God. And, um, and I, was, I never, I don't know why I didn't notice it before, but for whatever, I believe God just allowed me to see it differently, just really see it. And I remember telling my wife, I said, did you know as a woman, you weren't created as the image of God? And she, it really, it really, it got to her. And then, so when, so we were going back, it started in May. So we were going back and forth, kind of trying to figure out this whole image of God. She felt like, no, we're equal. I said, no, it says the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is man and the head of Christ is God. We were going back and forth and I was trying to find videos. And Elder, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch the image of uh, Yah thing, uh, but what I want to uh, ask you, something that you didn't uh, speak on the interview, but just knowing your story um, and also because it was mentioned on certain blogs, we, we're not going to promote those blogs, but uh, those blogs that talked about um, what was happening in your life in 2015 in your marriage specifically, um, when you were trying to get your CFP, if you can expound on that situation, because this goes even further back, because I know the accusation, and the, even the accusation is because he wanted to do polygyny, and that's not even the reason why things went the way they did. Um, so let's go back all the way to 2015. What was going on in 2015? Well, 2015, and I'm glad you asked that, Deacon. So 2015, you know, I, you know, I obviously, um, uh, I just, I, I was out of the league for, um, in 2008, uh, didn't go back into the league. I ended up building this house, this 30,000 square feet home for my family and for ministry purposes. And, uh, so in 2010, and then, so for five years, I, I volunteered at the church. I volunteered at my children's school. I was on the board. I was doing a lot of volunteer because I didn't, I didn't have to work to provide for my family anymore. I, I mean, my money literally was making money on its own just by investing, you know, budgeting, doing the things that I do. And um, so I literally did not have to make money to provide my lifestyle, to provide for my children, to be a blessing to the church and things of that nature. But it gets old. I mean, I took my children to school. I was very involved in every aspect of their life. Um, you know, one of the things that um, my ex-wife at the time, she was my wife at the time, but my ex-wife. Um, at that time, she she really did not like to share me. And she she used to say, I don't want to have to share you with the world. And really, a.k.a. she didn't want to have to share me with the most high Yah because everything that I was about, the thing that took my time was just spreading the gospel. I kept on trying to do the work. What I believed was the work of the ministry or work of uh, Jesus Christ. I was always trying to. That's why I was involved in their school because I was a Christian school. I was involved in church stuff. I was always involved and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she didn't like that. She, when we went on vacations, I'll be caught talking to people, trying to, you know, get people saved. You know, I've learned that, that you can't get anybody saved. Yeah, it does the saving. <laughs> but, but that was me, you know, and she always talked about, I don't want to share you. And so she really wanted my time, you know, and it just got to a point where I got to do something. But I remember one time my son, one of my children, I can't think of it at the time, who was it? But one of my son, I remember he would describe, he said, oh yeah, my dad doesn't work. He just sits, he just sits in front of a computer all day, which, you know, I'm sitting in front of a computer right now. And I do work as a, you know, doing finance and stuff like that. And so my children did not see me working. And that bothered me hearing that as a father, thinking that I got boys. And when I grew up, I saw my dad working. My dad was a plumber. So he worked with his hands. He got out. He had to leave and go do work. I used to work with my dad. I used to work with him. I was his helper. And I wanted to be a plumber when I was a little boy like my dad. And that's why I went to school for business so I can go take his business to the next level. So when I when I heard that, man, that just hit me hard because I didn't want my sons growing up not because they didn't really remember me playing football. They were very young. I think when I was retired, my oldest son was six years old at the time. So he really didn't see me play. He didn't really see me play ball. Shalom, shalom, Elder Rufus. I see Elder Rufus on here. Um, but, but they didn't see me playing ball, so he didn't really see me go to work or remember that. 
And so it was important for me to make sure that they understand that a man needs to work to provide for things because there's no guarantee that they're going to go and make, make it to the NFL. They got to understand that you got to go work. And so um, people kept on telling me at the time because I was helping in my church. I was teaching people how to handle money God's way. I was teaching people how to budget, helping people get out of debt. So I was really big in the church and trying to help people to tithe, help them to budget, how to save and things of that nature. And uh, at the time, my financial advisor said, have you ever thought about getting into the business? Because you have a very uh, unique skill, the, the way you handle money, the way you look at money, the way it just that not everybody's like that. And I thought that everybody was like that, you know, but I found out everybody's not like that. It's very rare. And you know that, Deacon, how I do oh, things. Yeah. You look at me like, wow, you do that? I don't know how you do it. I always say, I don't know how you uh, able to do things you do. But anyway, <laughs> so. So that's when I decided to get my, my license to get into the financial industry. Eventually, that led to now me going after my CFP. Because after you get your license, anybody can kind of get a license. I don't want to say that, but you can get into the business. But that didn't really give you the, the, the credibility that you knew what you're talking about. You pretty had a, you had a license to be dangerous. And I remember at the time, my, the guy that I used to work with, he was trying to discourage me from getting my CFP. He said, man, it's hard. It's hard, man. I'm telling you. And another guy, he said he tried it, he quit. And I remember everybody in the industry, and it, it happened to be Caucasian, man. I, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm just telling you that's just the facts, right? But I felt like they were discouraging me, say, just be a recruiter, recruit people, bring them in, and we'll take it from here. But they never wanted me to be a CFP. I felt that very strong. My wife at the time tried to come off more supportive of me, but I think Maybe what she was hearing was that I would quit because everybody that was that she respected said, man, it's hard. There's no way an a athlete is going to go after this stuff. I happened to get a hold of a guy that used to play um, minor league baseball. I don't think he did major league baseball, but he got his CFP while he was playing minor league baseball. And it was that guy, and I can't think of his name. I feel bad, but it was that guy that encouraged me, says, hey, you can do it. And that voice, when he told me you can do it, but you're going to have to sacrifice, do the same thing you did in football, the same way you broke Reggie White's record, you need to take that same tenacity and you need to take it in there and hit that books and you can do it. And when I heard that, I finally says, I'm going to go ahead and do it. But before I did that, at the time, the way I used to operate, I went to my wife and I told her, hey, this is going to require a lot of me. I'm going to have to put a lot on your on your shoulder, like typical duties, taking the children to school or bringing them, picking them back up. And, and it was a lot of things I had to hand off to the children and things like that. I said, but I really got to put a lot of time. It's got to be God. And then CFP is the second thing on my plate. I can't, you know, I can't do all the things, date nights and all this stuff. And she was very supportive in the beginning. I even came back again the next day. I said, are you rich? She said, I want you to do this. I support you. So then I went in on it. And I went in and I studied for over a year and did all the things, took the test, went to schooling because I had to go to a schooling, uh, financial schooling. And then eventually I had to go for the test, which was grueling. It was grueling, man. I'm saying it was harder than playing in the NFL, man. I'm, like I was drinking so much coffee. I, I, I'm not even a coffee drinker, you know, but I was drinking coffee just to keep my brain stimulated. And after going through all that, it created a lot of stress because now she's cooking for me. Now she's bringing me food, things that she didn't do before, you know, being a wife. So that was so weird. So during the times I would take breaks in my uh, in my study, I would go back and just watch videos just to check out, just to kind of get my brain, you know, a break from studying. And so that's when I kind of ran into this different th thing about the image of God or doing studying. That's and so that's how it was very stressful. It, it was the most stressful time up to date, up to that date. It was the most stressful time in our marriage, in our family ever been is me going to school. And so that that's where the tension came in. And then from there, uh, you know, I, I ran into the whole head covering thing. And then from there, head covering led to uh, uh, no image of God and then image of God led to uh, head covering. And then eventually straightway came in. So that was about it. I don't know if I answered your question. No, that's, that, that's good. You know, and because I think if uh, when I think back at the at the blog, um, there was an admission at that point where as much as there was support for you doing it, but really it was something being harbored in that they didn't want you to do it. She didn't want you to do it. And secretly, it, covertly. Secretly, covertly, covertly exactly. Yeah. But and she then, didn't want to look like not, she didn't want to look like the non-supportive wife, right? And and I asked her, uh, Deacon, I went to her and I said, are you sure I don't have to do this? She says, no, I want you to do this. I got your back. 
And I'll even tell you that just being in this ministry and going through my divorce and going through uh, dealing with the police and, you know, you, you saw you were here. You lived to yeah. see that. That right there was way more stressful than my CFP, man. Thinking, I, I mean, that was made sure. And I was married with um, I'm with uh, Sister Bree. She's my woman. And being in that situation, she and you guys as a community was very supportive. And I'm thinking like, man, I wonder what life would have looked like if I went through the CFP with this type of family. I, I would it would have been a much smoother transition or uh, studying time because I didn't have the stress of my wife is not happy that, you, you know, all this stuff and me trying to pass the test and having these two worlds struggling. But like when I'm with my family now, whatever I'm focused on, the support is there. And and it's it's beautiful, you know. And when I'm ready to see my woman, she's there for me. She's not saying, "Well, we don't spend enough time." And where have you been? <laughs> You've been. She's not in my ear nagging about me doing my purpose, mm. you know, being on purpose and stuff like that. But in Christian, but when I was in my Christian marriage, oh my goodness, it was even during my football season. It was like that, right? The night before a game or the morning of the game. I mean, well, we don't. Spend, I'm like, are you free? I got a game. I got a big game here, and you're here nagging about something I'm not mm. doing because of my work. The very thing that provides roof over your head, you're nagging me. So, I mean, it. Like I said, it was. Uh, it was very stressful, and it was really just her being a woman, just being a woman, being in her role. And she just did. She was lazy. She was a lazy mm -hmm. woman. Everything was paid for. We had a cleaning lady, babysitters, everything, everything that a, a that a, 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 a I guess a wealthy woman had. She had everything. She didn't have to do much. She slept around shop, shop, slept and fold clothes. That mm -hmm. that is what she was good for. And uh, and when I require her to do more, cook, serve me, be my help meet. I always used to say, hey, help meet. Help me, <laughs> you know, like trying to make like mm -hmm. help, remind her you are mm -hmm. my help meet. So yeah. anyway, I don't well, want that's, to that's, that's 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 I mean, I think it's safe to say we'll we'll get to the next clip here. I'll just uh, want to add this real quick. It's safe to say that straightway was more so of a propelling factor and not the actual reason. As you know, she checked out a long time ago. Oh and, yeah, years. Good yeah. excuse because it would have it plays good to her story. But really, it was it was something in her heart that was that was long long time in there, and it was just boiling, and it wasn't being truthful. So it, it, it's normal. It's normal in Christian relationship. This is a normal protocol. You know, they get unhappy, they put all this pressure on men, and and they divorce them, and they justify that I'm not happy. You know, yeah. so it's a mate. Christianity is a matriarch religion. It it's is. revolved around the woman. When they say focus on the family, it's really focus on the woman <laughs> that's really exactly. what it is you know so um it should be focused on jesus and that's what straightway truth uh is about is focus on yeshua hamashiach so